guys welcome back to my channel you guys already know why we're here <laughs> married at first sight if you guys this is my disclaimer if you hear something that sounds like a little crunching that's my dog it's dinner time and she's eating now right now <laughs> loudly obnoxiously listen just letting her live her life so this was this we're doing married at first sight season 12 this was episode 7 and the title of it was, How Do You Know If You're In Love? And before we get started, I want to tell you guys, this episode was um, actually pretty boring. It's... <sighs> we get to Chris and Paige, I'm going to tell you why they needed to drum up something. Because this season without them, a little dry. <laughs> a little dehydrated. So, per usual, I'm going to go in the order of the couple that had the least amount of notes. And that this week, ooh, it might be a tie between, we're gonna go with Virginia and Eric first. So this is the episode where they move in together. They go to their apartments, take stuff, and then they move in together. So um, for Virginia and Eric, let me put, see what I put for them like their house situation packing up um when they were when they went to eric's um eric loved virginia's place i liked virginia's place too it was really fun it was very much her personality um so i really liked virginia virginia's place virginia has a bunch of dogs i think she had like two dogs and a cat or two cats but eric is allergic to cats i'm like mm, how's this gonna work eric's place was a bachelor pad I watch, currently I'm watching How I Met Your Mother. It's hilarious. And it reminds me very much, it's giving me Barney Stimson. It's Barney Stimson vibes. It's giving me, I haven't had a woman live with me in a long time. Cause he hasn't. Um, and that's all I have about their like moving situation. So back to them. The show was literally five seconds in and she was saying that when they move into their place, they're gonna need wine glasses. Every season, somebody's drunk. Is that, a, is that a requirement? Like every season, there's somebody who's a, who's, who's low-key alcoholic. This season, Virginia's got it. She says she's never lived with, them, with someone. I think that there's a part of Eric that likes that she's never lived with somebody because he wants to, for the lack of a better term, mold her into what he wants her to be. Because I told y'all before, he views her as a possession, not as a person. Seriously, sweetie. But she be so loud. She's adorable, so I, I let it be. She says that they were talking about when they move in together, and she was like, you know, because sometimes I'm just going to need space. Ma'am, he works half the month. Take your space when he's not there. What did, You made all of this ruckus recently about how you want him to be home and how he's going to be gone half the month, and now you need space? In the 15 days of the month, he's actually going to be home? Girl, what are you talking about? So this episode, the expert that came was Pastor Cal. And he had all these. He had the nuggets. Chicken. Golden. He was just dropping gems all over the place. He said, um, I wrote that when Virginia and him, them sat down to speak with Pastor Cal, she was already tipsy. Baby, baby, I ain't seen her sober yet feel like Eric feels like he's grown and that he needs to fix he acts as once I told you guys before he doesn't understand that she's just as grown as him although she's not as old as him he acts like the age difference is so is significant I don't hear Jacob talking about his his age gap from Haley and he's actually 10 years older than her this man is this many seconds older than her and keep acting like he's just so prestigious and just got it all together and she she just living some wild life know what she's doing is what a lot of women don't do at her age living her life and i appreciate it but she's also doing what a lot of women do too and feeling like they're getting older and they need to have a husband eh. why she's here who knows um so when they were talking to pastor cal 
they brought up the situation about him being jealous about her having male friends. And she was just like, you know, cause I have guy friends and sometimes I'm drinking a lot and I pass out on their couch. And I was like, she what? She do what on their house? No ma'am, no ma'am. Pastor Gal said, I'm a married man and I'm not okay with that. Nobody's okay with it. What? And then Pastor Cal's point, because initially I didn't know that she was getting drunk and passing out on man's couch because she didn't say that or they edited it out. You, you never know which one. But for her to think that she should be a married woman out at her male friend's house for hours drunk and then passing out at his house. What her husband supposed to be doing while she's drunk at her friend? What? We done with them. Enough. Clara and Ryan next because they're kind of uh, meh this week. So the first thing I wrote is Clara's lashes. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't. I don't understand them. I don't understand why it's happening. Um, I don't understand why she thinks it looks natural. Maybe she doesn't. She never says she thinks it looks natural. I just think that people want to have natural look at It's me, it's not her. Ryan says he goes to bed like 10, 10 30-ish. And she was like, I never go to sleep that early. I do, every night. If I go to bed, if I go to sleep at the 11, I'm, I'm undone in the morning. Ma'am, what are you, what are we doing once again? She says, he says that he goes to sleep at 11 if he's had a wild night. Sounds like Ryan is an adult. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, I put, oh, and then when they were talking about like, like when they move in together, that Ryan has to sleep in complete darkness. It's me. This has already been a conversation of, with me and babe. Like whenever he does move in, I have to be in darkness. I have never had a, tele, a television in my bedroom. So I need to be in the pitch black of it all or I literally cannot go to sleep. This I can do like a sound. If you wanna play music or something, that's one thing, but it has to be pitch black or I'm not gonna go to sleep. And I'm one of those people who go to sleep now, that I'm getting some therapy and I ain't, I ain't having anxious thoughts all night. I can go to close my eyes and just go to bed. I don't have to do nothing, lullaby myself to sleep. It's a beautiful thing, <laughs> just saying. Um, when Pastor Cal came to visit them, oh, let me talk about what they, what, when they went to each other's apartments, how they felt about that, because once we were talking about them moving in. Ryan's place was super neat, but Ryan is very much a man. No, not being sexist, but you know, y'all know what I mean. He had, like his kitchen was clean. Everything was clean on the outside, but if you pulled out a drawer, or opened a cabinet, stuff was gonna drop on your head and kill you. He just puts his like underwear, like just slings them in the drawer. Sir, what? Pastor Cal asked them were they having sex and she was like, they were, I thought initially that they were lying, but then when they showed the um, clip for next week, Clara said she's actually frustrated. Girl, give her, Ryan, you better give her the girl a piece. She wants you. She likes you. See them eyebrows? She wanna have six. <laughs> if y'all know what I'm talking about, put it in the comments when I say she wanna have six. <laughs> um so Ryan has you know, said before that he has never said that he was in love. And he said, Pastor Cal asked him, how would you know how, what that feels like? How would you know what that, that you're in love? And he said, I liked it. He said, well, I liked Pastor Cal's response. He said that he'll know he's in love when it's a feeling that he's never, like he's never been able to, like he can't explain. Pastor Cal told him that this is what love is. Y'all ready for it? Get close, listen. Love is an intellectual decision we make to fulfill another person's legitimate need. Boom. And that is not a feeling. And then he told him basically that he was in love with Clara because they had mentioned about how they were in the bed the, the, the night before and they were like, 
you know, we're going to do this. We're going to give it a hundred percent. We're in this to like, like we're in this. Sounds like sound. He says, I'm not going to tell you what it is. And, and I like that Pastor Cal said that he doesn't want him to be so afraid of the word, but because love is not just the word, it's that beautiful definition he gave up. It's like, <laughs> come through Pastor Cal. We're going to go with Haley and Jacob next. So we ended the last, the, at the end of the last episode, it was the whole thing about how she had wanted to go hang out with people. She didn't want to hang out with him, whatever. So Jacob on this episode, it starts with them. Like um, everybody is in the airport together, getting ready to go home. Haley by herself, Jacob by himself, because they was having a little hussy fussy. So Jacob had accused her of having a boyfriend back home. And I put that they were the only couple that were separate at the, hosp um, at the airport hospital. Y'all know why I work. I put that they were the only couple separate at the airport. Jake feels like she's been dating other people. So I, we later go on to find out that this fear is because in past relationships, he was the side guy. So now he feels like because she's pulling away, it's because she has somebody else. First of all, we can't do that because we've all know from we were little cubs, what assuming does. And you can't just decide that a girl got a boyfriend because she's not, she's pulling away from you. Okay? There's a lot, there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more things that could be a problem besides her having a boyfriend. You're the problem. Okay? You're what she has an issue with. So when they were standing there fussing, she was like, I've never had anybody um, call insinuate that I'm a liar. He said, well, you did lie. I was like, Jacob. Last week I really liked Jacob. This week he cutting up. Um, he said that she has, he's like, I talked to the experts and I told him I didn't want nobody who, who was high strung. She was like, so now I'm high strung. Yeah. You have high anxiety. She was like, so now you diagnose me, Jacob, no, sweetheart. You can't days. Y'all literally just moving in together. You can't, as soon as y'all get together, you, sir, have I mentioned this episode, how all of them need some therapy? All of them, to, they went to her place and then they went to his house with the neon lights. We'll get to it. So I wrote down that Haiti has a very nice town home. She, I like those houses where like you walk in and you have to go upstairs to it. It's just, it's a vibe. And Jake's house, sir, remember, remember I told y'all I don't know when it was, but I told y'all before that he's in Arrested Development. We have, it's 2021, come out of the 80s. He had neon lights, he had all kinds of, look like stuff be at your grandma house. And then you bring that lady home, which I believe that he can have his own style. I think that's appropriate. I think that that's just not a, it's not going to work for Haley. I believe that there's somebody who's going to totally love Jake because he's a handsome fella. He seems like he communicates well when he does communicate. When you communicate back, he doesn't do so well if you're not back with him, but he could. So like, I don't, I don't know why they put them together. Like, it's beyond me, really. So Jake has a dog named Chloe and she terrorizes, like she's a little terror. First of all, he has three dogs. And then we gotta try to co-mingle four pets together. And Chloe, every time you go to the house night, she gotta be locked up cause she, she a monster. That's all I had to say about their places. So their Pastor Cal visit. <sighs> Pastor Cal comes to the house. I literally wrote. So the little dog of Haley's, Sophie, literally loves Jake. She's like laying his lap. Like, oh my gosh, I love this guy. And I'm like, all oh, that says, you know, they claim dogs, no. So it's a good thing that the dog likes um, Jacob. Jacob, I put before, he has trust issues because I we were just talking about it. He has trust issues because of his past. Therapy, baby. Marriage don't fix that. You Now you bring in your trust, bring in stuff that ain't got nothing to do with this woman into this marriage. And bring in the 80s into this marriage and she was born in the 90s. When I was at his house, she was, he was talking about the 80s. She says, but I wasn't born. Exactly. Exactly. 
stop it. He finally was open and honest about how him being obsessed with the 80s is problematic because it is. Because it's too, at this point it's 2020. It's problematic, sir. Get over it, expeditiously. Next, we're going to go to Vincent and Brianna. So Vincent is messy. Brianna is clean, neat. She said that the whole time they was on the honeymoon, she cleaned up after him. She said it like a mom would say about her 10 year old or five year old. She was a, once again, I told you she gives me big mom vibes. When they went to each other's houses, Brianna has so many clothes and shoes. Vincent kept jokingly saying that she needs to donate them. What's interesting is how he made jokes about her, but the moment she joked about him, it was a problem. It's the, it's the not di being able to take what you can dish. It's, it's, <laughs> I, don't under, I don't understand. We're gonna get to that in a moment. She had a bunch of clothes, a bunch of shoes. He would make comments the entire time. She had a very pretty place. Her house was really nice. But like I said, she had a lot of clothes and a lot of shoes. Um, and then when I went to his place, she liked his place too. He did have a nice place. It was nice, it was clean. She said she was worried about that because when it was on, and there was only a honeymoon, she cleaned up after him the whole time. So she didn't think his house was clean. Sweetheart, his house was clean because he knew he was coming. Man. Yeah. I would hope he just won't leave his house a pigsty and then let you come back and see it. It's probably, you're probably gonna be picking up after him later too. It's probably still gonna be going on. Just saying. Huh. So Pastor Cal asked Brianna what she likes about Vincent and he said that she said that she likes his kindness. Vincent says he feels like um, Brianna is a great compliment to him. He said that she completes him and I cringe because I don't subscribe to the notion of us being incomplete without another person because we're, I'm very much whole and I'm going to marry somebody who is whole and we're just gonna be two holes co-mingling together. He's not going to complete me, okay? I think Vincent is in love with her. Vincent um, says that he needs her to be more respectful. He says, what his, I think what Vincent doesn't know how to do is articulate and communicate way effectively. Therapy. But he does this thing where he'll say something, but he can't give an example of what he's talking about. So he, it's almost like he doesn't want to be harmful. And Pastor Cal, um, when they were talking about like communication style, he was like, Vincent was like, Brianna is very like blunt. And he was like, I beat around the bush. Sir, we're grown. This is how you get nowhere. You just run around in the bush in a circle. No, say what you mean to me, what you say. Um, he says that he's always afraid that he's going to hurt her feelings. And Pastor Cal was like, feelings will get hurt. That's true. In relationships, I've hurt Bay's feelings. He's hurt mine. And what he says is that you, what's important is that you learn the person's heart so that you understand that even when they're hurting, like when they do something hurtful, you know their heart. And that's the thing is you guys, they don't know each other's heart yet. So they're just being so like cautious, but like love, because you open yourself up to a place of vulnerability, you run the risk of being hurt. That just is what it is. Sin. he has major trust issues. Um, not even trust issue. He, he, I don't know what happened in his past relationship. He hasn't articulated what happened, but he and um, Brianna got home. He spilled champagne all over the floor. And she was jokingly, I took it jokingly saying, you know, that's very Vincent of you. You know, you know, great way to break in the apartment. She was just making like, and I think because he hasn't been vocal about how she makes him feel, it, it was the straw for him. And he went off, told her about how he don't like her making them little slick comments. Um, what he said, he don't like her making them slick comments. And then he told her, I could always go back home and put on a backpack and love. Brown was like, he said he can go home, but we live here now, so where's home? Exactly. I hope that they do another like visit with Pastor Cal or something because he gon' He's gonna have to articulate better than this. Like something happened in your past relationship, 
you need to bring that up. Be like Chris, bring up your ass. Terry, you're so petty for that. All right, last but never least, it's gonna be Paige and Chris. I'm honestly tired of them. At this point, it's just exhausting to keep watching because he's, is, <laughs> anywho. So, everybody is on a plane together, except for Haley and Jacob. Paige does a video. What's his face sitting next to her? They doing a little diary. I was like, oh, it's not we going home. Paige goes to Atlanta. Chris goes to Chicago. What? what? I don't. When I say for the life of me, I don't understand. And this is what I was talking about earlier. I realized that the reason why they, a part of them choosing Chris, knowing what they know, because you're not going to convince me that they didn't know. Just, you know, it just happened to be, she was this amount of weeks pregnant. It just happened to be, she could show up next week for an episode. Miss me with the acting like y'all surprised because I don't think Pastor Cal knew because he was genuinely shocked and appalled. But I think the producer folks knew. Okay. So he went to Chicago. So Chris um, calls her, tells her that he thinks that they should get a divorce. He tells her that he's in love with his ex. His ex is in love with him. He thinks they should get a divorce. Okay, that should be the end of this. It's not. Why would it end? Paige said that she was not expecting that regarding Chris um, wanting a divorce. Ma'am, y'all need one. What you mean? And what you mean you wasn't expecting that? You don't know him. Cal came to the house. Paige was there alone. So Pastor Cal, you can tell he was so disappointed when he was talking to Paige. Like, it's because it's disappointing. We're all disappointed in the situation. She told him about how he basically, all that we know about how he was disconnected. There was a disconnect at the wedding. And then on the wedding night, he sleeps with her sleeps with her because she's his wife. He, she said, Pastor Cal was like, well, why did you have sex with him? She said she felt like she was obligated because um, because she was his wife. It was under the, he acted like, well, you my wife now, so we should have sex. So he had sex with her that night, then that morning. Then the next day, she she wouldn't have done a whole line. Then he tells me that he's not, that he's not physically attracted to me. Pastor Cal, when I say Pastor Cal was like, his face was when he was telling her about she was telling him about Chris saying that he wanted to sleep with her so that he can feel closer to her. Pastor Kel said that's BS. And he said, I can't say it because I'm a pastor. I can say it. It's bullshit. Okay? With the capital T. Huh. Pastor Cal was flabbergasted by the pregnancy announcement. He Pastor Cal will ask what Aldous was thinking. She said she slept with him like, first of all, they've been married 11 days at this point. She said she slept with him every day except for two days. So how, you said sex with him, how, girl, what? After the two times when he told you he wasn't attracted to you. Okay. And I didn't know this until this episode that six weeks ago when he got this girl pregnant, they were in the process of being on this show. From what I'm hearing from my, I, I told y'all follow the spoiler page. From the spoiler page, they're so far so they've been true because they did they did say that Chris does not move into the apartment. That was true. They um, also they said that the process to get on the show is like three months. So six weeks ago was very much in the middle of the process. Pastor Cal asked if she was really pregnant, which um, oh so. When they're in the middle of that conversation, Chris just shows up. From where? Who knows? He just shows up, mic'd up, and he's there. Pastor Cal was so unenthused when he saw him. It was very much, hey, hey, how you doing? Pastor Cal asked Chris if the girl was really pregnant. What's interesting is that this type of question is what somebody would ask if you're in the middle of a show like this and somebody comes up pregnant. But when Pastor Cal asked him, was the girl really pregnant? He wasn't as offended as when 
Eric and what's them face said made the, it's the same line of questioning. It's to me. I think he just wanted to be offended and wanted to be mad about something because he just happened to be on this show for being on TV sake and now he regrets it or whatever. So he asked him like, you want a divorce? And then he was like, I just feel like I don't want to be where I'm not taking care of my kid. Pastor Cal said, you can take care of your kid and not be with the, in the relationship with the mother. And then Chris was like, when I say that baby needs therapy, it's not even funny anymore how ridiculous he is. So he was like, um, he, Pastor Cal told him that even with like, you're not like feeling how you feel, like you want to get divorced, you want to get back with your ex. Pastor Cal was like, but you guys broke up for a reason. Like you're telling me that that reason now is null and void. Then he's sitting there, he don't have no answers. Cause he's not used to nobody keeping him accountable. He ain't. Huh. He says, he does this thing where, and I watch another, I, I told you guys, I only watch reviews after I've watched it myself and done it. But when Kevin and Alyssa do it, one of the things that, that I think we have a problem with with Chris is that he doesn't even treat Paige like she's somebody worth being respectful to. There's a way to have some sort of tact. And he just is rude and mean. For you to tell, the, the telling her you don't find her attractive, telling her you had a panic attack because of how she looked, telling her all of these things, I'm direct with her. Um, I just told her directly how I, there's a way you talk about people with care. You, man of God, you're supposed to care about people. And you are not treating Paige like you care. This being rude and crass thing that she, that, that's happening, mm. what? What's the, being rude is not being honest. It's just being rude. Ugh. And then when they were talking about how, so they're talking with Pastor Cal and he's talking about how like, how Paige is a ride or die. She was willing to be with him past the, him not finding her attractive, past the telling me about this baby thingy. He was like, um, to your point, my ex is an amazing woman too. What point? That's not the point he was making. So how was you two on his point? Y'all, when I say he scratches me, put it. So, Pastor Cal leaves, leaves them there. They decided, he decided that the best thing for both of them to do, Chris decided that the best thing for both of them to do is, is to get a divorce. Pastor Kyle was like, okay, well, I guess ain't nothing else for me to do. He walks, he walks out. He tells him to make good, make good decisions, leaves. Then Chris, cause if gaslighting was a person, it would be him. It would be him with his, with his, his confused hairstyle in his face and his shape and he, what, I don't, I don't, whatever. He's whispering something in her ear and she's smiling. Just literally again gave you his behind to kiss. And then he says, whispers a sweet nothing, because it's literally, this is the definition of a sweet nothing in your ear. And you're smiling. She's like, he whispered in my ear that he's afraid to fall in love with me. He is not afraid to fall in love with you. That is bull. Sweetheart. I know she's smarter than this. And I'm not gonna be convinced because sometimes they be acting like, you know, church people be acting like it's soul ties and all that stuff. Sweetheart, mm -mm. no, you're being foolish. And ain't ain't no way his sex is good. I won't believe it. Nope, you won't be able to convince me of it. I don't believe that he is just, in these little bit of times y'all had sex, you just so caught up. No, uh-uh. I wrote Chris is so manipulative. And, and then I wrote, if gaslighting was a person, it would be Chris. So, we're about to finish with this. So, then he says to her, where's my luggage? Because she took his luggage to Atlanta while he went to Chicago. What are we, what are we doing, you guys? She had his, he had the audacity to leave his luggage with her and then call, you're, you want to have whatever was in that suitcase would be would be would be no more. A little bonfire. What are you talking? 
They walk to the car. She's looking at him all lovingly. And then she was like, oh, I'm gonna turn around and walk away. And then she walks away, he gets in his car and drives off. Ma'am. Then next week, the baby mama coming on to the show. At this point, disgusted and disappointed is exactly how I feel. But, hey, what else? Thank you guys so much for watching me again. I enjoy this so much. We'll, we'll do this again. Hopefully it gets better because this was boring, child. Bye.